And, you know, I think people generally want to try to trust, don't we? We'd like to trust people. We'd like to not have to think about what they're saying and just say, you know what? I I really trust they're being honest. I really trust they're being truthful. And we'd like that to be the case. Unfortunately, we're in a time right now, I believe, in America where it's very hard for people to do that. And into that breach this morning steps Mary Kay Etter, who is a Major General, U.S. Army retired, former Army Deputy Chief of Public Affairs. She is a a U.S. Cyberscape analyst, and she is the author of the new book, American Cyberscape, Trials and the Path to Trust. And she joins us this morning to really examine, has America lost the ability to discern or to tell what is true? Good morning, Mary. How are you this morning? Great. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing very well. Good to have you aboard. And first of all, thank you for your service to our country. We truly appreciate that. And thank you for taking the time to be with us here today. Uh, American Cyberscape Trials and the Path to Trust. When I saw the title and, and the question, has America lost the ability to discern what is true? I had to get you on right away because I got to get your insights as to what's going on here. We, we do want to trust, don't we? And yet at the same time, we're having a very difficult time trusting in our institutions, trusting in our media and so many things here in our country today. What's going on? I've been tracking this for the past several years, and there's been a number of surveys that look at how we have lost that trust in all of our institutions, and really not just media and government, but also business and non-government institutions such as universities and churches. So we hit a point in this downward trend over the past several years that we're right at the rock bottom for this year. And I think this is due to a lot of factors, not just politics, but culture, uh, the coarsening of our public discourse, what we see in media in terms of coverage, and the continuing acts we continue to see of people who abuse their positions, who lie, and that tends to I make us distrust others in the same profession or in the same areas. And so we come to the point where we go, I'm not sure about anything I read or see anymore. So we we have to verify. So I guess the the question is, you know, why did it get like this? And and, and the other part, that, as I was listening to you talk there, has has dishonesty become – an acceptable part of who we are today under the guise of truth uh, and saying, okay, well, I'm standing up for a particular agenda that I think will make America better. Therefore, it's somehow okay to be dishonest. I mean, does that sound kind of like a tortured way of saying it's somehow okay to be dishonest? Well, I think we all self-justify. So it's, well, you know, for the greater good, I'm just going to have to tell this little white lie or dissemble a little bit in order to make a bigger and a better difference. And I think that's a human attitude. And some, for some, to some extent, we have to look at some of the things behind this. So we all have a confirmation bias. So we look at things in news that confirm beliefs we already hold. Hmm. So we, we only read or look at one source because they tend to say things we like. Right. So that becomes true to us, and everything else becomes false. So I like to read a number of different sources, watch different news outlets, so I get a variety of inputs. And that's one way in which you can judge, is to be able to see where things came from and how they're reported differently by different outlets. Then you can judge yourself. There are sites that that try to tell us where bias is in coverage, like a bell curve, you know, in the middle it's all Mm -hmm. neutral, and then there's to the right and to the left. I've looked at those, and I don't... Sometimes I don't agree with them or I don't understand why they place things in certain areas. So I have to keep looking for myself. But, boy, that takes a lot of time. And we don't all have that time. And there's just so much information that comes at us now. You know, the 24-hour news cycle started. Yeah, that point that you made about we we all don't have the time to get through all this stuff. and to be You know, we're we're working, we have families, we're getting kids to the soccer practices or basketball practices or baseball practices or whatever. Uh, we're, we're, you're spending time doing other things. And, and, and now you say, geez, I should just be able to trust that someone's trying to give me the right stuff here. Why do I have to go digging constantly to uh, come up with that? And that's where we've gotten to in this culture. You're exactly right. <clears throat> well, we don't have time to check it all, but we do have to engage. And I think we can't just let all of these things go by us. Now, we've watched over the past 20 years how news has devolved to be more focused on celebrities 
Mm-hmm. I know more about celebrity lives than I care about or want to know. <laughs> right. But it's it's out there and it's promoted and talked about at the same level as something serious, whether it's tornadoes, hurricanes, or something political. I don't need to know what is going on in celebrity lives. And I think we need to make our voices heard. So for many who I know in the news media, they don't get input. People don't call. They don't say, I like that story. This was good. Why don't you cover this? If you're talking about the crisis at the border, why don't you go deeper into the causes? Right. What is the strategic reason for this happening? Don't just talk to me about what's happening with the kids. I get that. Tell me more that informs me in a way that I can then make informed choices. WSBA Morning News with Gary Sutton with Mary Kay Etter this morning. Agree on, but at least that we all have views about because our news and our information has become so fragmented that we don't all have the same basis of fact to go from. Now, my ta- sister will watch nothing but cooking shows, so right. she doesn't know about other things. So served as Director of Public Affairs at the George C. Marshall European Center for Security Studies, an adjunct professor and lecturer in communications and public diplomacy at the NATO School and Sweden's International Training Command. Uh, in 2017, she was inducted into the Army Public Affairs Hall of Fame and received the Joe Galloway Lifetime Achievement Award for Excellence in Strategic Communication. And she's written a book, which is called American Cyberspace, Trials and the Path to Trust. And we're talking this morning about how we maybe have the inability to trust anymore in our country. And how do we get out of that? How do we move in the right direction? I, I wanted to ask you one question here, Mary, before we moved, moved on. Uh, you're a U.S. cyberscape analyst. For a lot of people who are sitting on... Yeah, okay, fine. And then you stop and say, what does that really mean? What does a cyberscape analyst do? Well, I'm not the person who looks at ones and zeros on a big screen (laughs) and says, aha, there's the hacker. Okay. I'm the person who looks at the cultural aspect behind it, you know, where misinformation or disinformation originates and how all of our tech systems are beginning to affect and change our lives. So I do it more from the cultural aspects of it and how – tech as a business works upon us. So how have we gotten to where we've gotten with this lack of trust? And what do we do to get out of this hole that we're in right now? Because I think we all would would say when we have a lack of trust in the institutions in our society, we're in a bad place. We better find a a way upward or we're going to maybe fail in the long run. Well, as I mentioned, we have the cultural aspects of how we got here, but we also have an innate sense of innocence, or maybe it's naivete as Americans, in that this new thing, this Internet, this this Facebook, Twitter, all of this stuff is good. We can communicate now with our friends and our family and do it faster. And we don't realize anything that is invented for good can also be used for ill purposes. And that is always the the death of innocence and then the realization that, wow, we've been scammed in some ways. Right. So what we have to do is continue to educate ourselves and demand that education take place, especially for kids in terms of civics, so that they understand how the Constitution works, how government works, what it means when they see things in the news, because we've lost a lot of that type of education for young people. What I'm seeing now is some of these institutions are helping out others, I just saw a whole series of courses for kids in grades 3 to 8 that was originated by the FBI. I wouldn't have thought the FBI would be doing educational courses for students, but a lot of schools are using these, and so it gives you a standardized basis for that education to help keep kids safe online. I've seen sheriff's departments begin to make lists of apps Uh parents need to be aware of for teenagers. So education, I think, for all of us, and how these things work, and how we open ourselves up to having our data taken, stolen, used, sold, and how we continue to get these ads that, if you mentioned yesterday you'd like to go out to dinner at this place, and then the next day you're getting ads about it, well, is Alexa spying on you now? Uh Did your doorbell tell somebody? So we have to be, I think, very aware of how technology works. We also have to protect our own privacy in every way that we can, watching what, what is on our, our smart watches, um, how our phones track us, even our cars track us now because they're sending data back to the manufacturer on how we brake or 
Maybe we don't stop at every stop sign, but it's also telling routes. So if you're a military person with that background like I have, you're not comfortable with this because mm-hmm. it's showing the route you take to work or it can show the entire perimeter of a base where you are. Wow. So we have yeah. to be very sensitive about our privacy and safeguarding it ourselves. Yeah, you and know, I think uh, we all have... Uh, just just to interject there, as I'm listening to you, so there's work to do. I mean, we have there's to be... We, to and because it, and what's really ironic here, we're talking about a lack of trust in media and our various institutions, and yet, what are we doing? We're trusting that our information is going to be okay when we put it out there in the cyberspace, and guess what? It's not okay. There are people out there who would who would do ill with that if they possibly could. Uh, didn't mean to interrupt you there. I just wanted to interject that as I was thinking about what you were saying. Go ahead. <clears throat> That's true, and some of it's generational. So as you have the younger millennials and the Gen Zs now coming into the workplace, they've spent their entire life on these devices and have no boundaries with how some of this information is safeguarded. So for my friends who work in certain large businesses, what they're seeing is the concept of client confidentiality is foreign to them. So they'll talk about anything with anyone, Mm -hmm. just sharing, getting information, um, gaining consensus and not realizing they violated uh, the confidentiality of their clients or even their company. So wow. there is a lot to do in terms of education, not just in schools, but also in business and also having individuals. We have to take responsibility for our own privacy and our own engagement with all of these systems, devices, tech companies, because we're at the point now where we're going to start seeing regulation. We're going to have to see it. Yeah. We're going to see it in some senses, not just by states, but we're going to need some federal, I think, um, laws to some extent to regulate what's happening with antitrust, with mm-hmm. monopolies, and with what these companies do with our personal information. About 30 seconds left, Mary. Final thoughts on this. It's a really fascinating subject to me, but uh, you've obviously done a lot of work on it. Uh, final words. I think we have a great path ahead. It's not an easy one, but we're at the point now where this is the tipping point. This is where we make the choice of which way we go in the future. So let's go towards having an informed future where if we give up our personal information, it's because we choose to. Mm. If we read a piece of news, it's because we understand where it came from, and we understand the people who made it have certain standards, and we all agree what those are. Great points this morning. American Cyberspa- or Cyberscape uh, Trials and the Path to Trust. Where can people find your book? You can find it in Barnes & Noble. You can find it on Amazon and anywhere books are sold.